Mac is still there, we'll have another go at another election. Omalo Kijana is no longer chairman of Ford Kenya. Your servant and not your master. The perpetrators of these actions are really enemies of multi-party democracy. Lack of respect for the rule of law would destroy democracy in this country. Coups are a cake. Coups are an anachronistic to good order, and coups are activities of cowards. Honorable Moses Masika Wetangula is hereby dismissed from the position of party leader. Ford Kenya is not a Bungoma affair. Ford Kenya is a national party. And as the new Secretary General, I now have the instruments of power. Kenya! Simba, Simba, Simba! Ford Kenya is the second oldest party in the country after the Independence Party Kanu. From its inception in 1992 when Kenya repealed Section 2A of the then Constitution. To allow multi-party democracy, the party has had its own fair share of political intrigues. To begin with, the party whose symbol is a lion and whose colors are black, white and green came into existence following a fallout in the mother party, the giant Forum for Restoration of Democracy Ford. Supremacy battle between two fathers of multi-party democracy Jaramogi Oginga Odinga and Kenneth Njindo Matiba led to the disintegration of Ford few months after its formation as they jostled for opposition's presidential ticket in the 1992 presidential election. Eventually, Ford split into two factions of Ford Kenya and Ford Asili. Simba ndiyo sasa atapigana huko kiwanjani. Na Simba atalete uhuru na uhuru lazima iwe na uhaki na ukweli. Jaramogi became the founder chairman or party leader of Ford Kenya with Paul Kibugi Mwite as the first national vice chairman and Michael Omalo Kijana as the second national vice chairman. Immediately after the historic December 1992 general election, in which Jaramogi and other opposition candidates lost to President Daniel Arap Moi, Mwite fell out with Oginga and ditched Ford Kenya in a half. Tumualike kiongozi wetu, ambaye tarehe moja atakuwa wapi? Santeni sana. Effectively elevating Omalo Kijana to Oginga's deputy. Unfortunately, two years later, in January 1994, the doyen of Kenyan politics, Adonija Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, died, a death that triggered vicious power struggle within Ford Kenya. With Paul Mwite having exited the party earlier, naturally it was Michael Omalo Kijana as the vice chair who took over the affairs of the Lion Party. However, Jaramogi's son, Raila Odinga, who was then its director of elections, challenged Wamalwa for party leadership. A move that did not augur well with some members within Ford Kenya. 
Raila did not back down and sustained his quest to wrestle the lion from Amalwa's hands, a political contest that was threatening to sink Ford Kenya and Wamalwa, who was the then official opposition leader. In 1996, two years after Oginga's death, the two groups came face to face at Thika Stadium as the party attempted to hold elections to replace its chairman, the late Oginga Odinga. It was a high-stake election because whoever would have been elected would become the automatic presidential candidate in the 1997 general election. ACK Archbishop, the most reverend Manasseh Kuria, was to preside over the election. Raila Odinga knew very well that was the only opportunity remaining and he mobilized his delegates and so was Wamalwa. Sources indicate that initially Raila was to go for the vice chairman's position but changed his mind upon realizing Wamalwa was supporting firebrand Ugenya member of parliament James Orengo whom, alongside 11 other members of parliament from Nyanza, had thrown their weight behind Wamalwa Kijana, a move that prompted Raila to take him head on. Pro Raila Odinga delegates are said to have spent the night at the venue, the Thika Stadium, and by 4 a.m. they had locked all the gates. When Odinga arrived, his supporters cheered and quickly whisked him to some corner and here. All manner of political and traditional antics were unleashed as the elders performed rituals they believed would hand their son the much needed political victory. It was a do or die moment for Raila Odinga in Ford, Kenya. Anxiety and suspicion engulfed the air, and accessing the venue was an uphill task. Only Archbishop Manasseh Kuria had it a bit easy, given the critical role he was to play. When Michael Wamalwa Camp arrived, including presiding officers, they could not access the stadium forcing them to use an axe to break the chains. Once inside, the Wamalwa camp sensed danger and for some minutes delayed his entry, fearing what could follow. Eventually, he landed at the main dyers as pandemonium reigned. Tension remained high. The two protagonists could neither see eye to eye nor shake hands initially. But after a while, Archbishop Kuria broke the eyes and Wamalwa and Raila finally shook hands. Well, that was as far as the temporary handshake or peace deal went. Within a fraction of a second, chaos erupted, scuttling the election. When the dust settled, Wamalwa Kijana's camp regrouped and he was declared Ford Kenya's new chairman, while Raila's team also conducted their parallel election outside the stadium, naming him the party chairman as well. But nonetheless, the election had aborted. Uh, we will we'll have another the go. Party, we are not giving up. The there. party is still there. The, the, constitution, there. the constitution has not been suspended. The neck is still there. We'll have another go at another election. Omalo Kijana is no longer chairman of Ford Kenya. Okay? Ford Kenya is now going from henceforth to be led by a caretaker committee. The Thika meeting was a culmination of difficult but successful arbitration talks at the All Saints Cathedral, whose mediator was Archbishop Manasseh Kuria. Reports indicate that at some point, Odinga and Wamalwa camps could not share a table and had to be stationed in separate rooms as the mediator shuttled from one team to the other. 
It was as a result of the All Saints Cathedral ceasefire deal that the two teams agreed for an election to be held with both camps unanimously settling for Thika Stadium as a neutral ground because the host community, the Kikuyu, was an interested party. Eventually, the chief mediator gave up. And from now on, I have resigned from being the umpire of Fort Kenya. The first attempted coup had failed, and on 31st December 1996, Raila Amolo Odinga threw in the towel, resigning from Ford Kenya as Langata Member of Parliament and formed a new party, NDP. The time has come to change course. I wish to inform you that I have resigned as a member of Port Kenya. I hereby tender my resignation as a member of parliament. The first attempted coup in the Lion Den had failed in August 2003. Michael Wamalwa Kijana, who was the vice president, died while in office, setting the stage for a second power struggle at Simba House. This time round, the battle was among three veteran politicians who enjoyed close ties with the late Wamalwa Kijana. Dr. Mukhesa Kitui, Musikari Nazikombo, and Dr. Noah Wekesa. The contest was, however, between cabinet ministers, Kimi Lili's Dr. Mukhesa Kitui, a cousin to the late Wamalwa, and Webuye's Musikari Kombo, who was Wamalwa's best man during his wedding. Uh, yes. like it was to be a hotly contested dress as 177 delegates cast their votes with Combo beating Kitui with only 29 votes. Weshimiwa Noah Wekeza aliwai kuchukua kura kubina sita. Mweshimiwa Mukeza Kitui akapata kura sitine na sita. Naye mweshimiwa musikari kombo ambaye labda asimame maali aneketi mumuone ame, amechukua kura tisaini na tano. Nataka kumpongeza mwenzangu mweshimiwa musikari kombo kuchaguliwa Kwa kura nyingi sana kama chairman wa Fort Kenya. We all pledged commitment to remain focused, engaged, respectful members of the NAC family, but belonging to a party called Fort Kenya, which we committed ourselves to nurture. I want to lead this party with a vision of Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga and the courage and principles of Pius Masinde Muliro and the eloquence and moderation of Michael Wamala Kijana. So, <laughs> 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 Na kwamba mimi nitakuwa kwa kiingereza mnasema you are servant and not your master. Just like with his predecessor, it did not take long for a fire to be lit under Musikari Kombo's seat. In November 2006, then Malava lawmaker and housing minister, the late Soita Shitanda, staged a coup and attempted to topple Musikari Kombo as Ford Kenya party leader. 110 delegates from 55 branches held a meeting at Sportsview Hotel in Kasarani and announced Shitanda as the new king at the Lion Party, a move that shocked Musikari Kombo. I am chairman, I'm just telling you that the meeting is illegal. If, if a meeting is an illegal meeting, how can uh, 
we entertain illegality. No, it can't. And the people behind this, Mwishmiwa Soito Shitanda, is actually serving some masters. And we will soon expose him, because we will soon tell which masters he's serving. Let him take note. We know a lot about Soita. You know, I've never been personal, but now we are reaching a stage where we are being pushed to the wall, and we are going to expose him. By then, Wafula Munyinyi and Moses Wetangula were combos diehards as Ford Kenya battled rebels led by Soita Shitanda and Dr. Bonnie Halwale, who wanted to snatch the lion from Musikari Kombo's hands. Uh, and in the event that uh, the registrar, you know, accedes to registering them, then we will know that the government also has a hand in it. Tumekuwa na mkutano na koti, mambo imekuisha. I am absolutely grateful to the courts and to the ruling this afternoon. Gerald Kopio, who was Ford Kenya's Deputy Secretary General, was among those uncomfortable with Combo's reign at Simba House. The National Executive Council of the party of Ford Kenya is junior to the General Council, which met yesterday at Kasarani and removed Muscari Combo from his position. So he cannot purport to, to sack officers who are in terms of uh, mandate higher than him in the party. But it only proves that, that Muscari Combo has never bothered to read the party's constitution. And I do invite him and his cohorts to do that if they want to remain members of Fort Kenya. Earlier, Kopio had been manhandled and kicked out when he attempted to challenge the legality of a meeting that had been called at party headquarters by Combo, a meeting that also witnessed some chaos. I'm going to court. I'm going to stop all these illegal activities because the delegates list has been faked. So the meeting has not been convened in accordance with the law. And that is all I want to say. Mr. Kopio, are you defecting from Fort Kenya? No, I'm not defecting from Fort Kenya. I'm facing Combo right on. The perpetrators of these actions are really enemies of multi-party democracy. And therefore, if the government has a hand in it, it's an enemy of multi-party democracy, and we will resist. Just like Raila Odinga, Shitanda and Halwale ditched Ford Kenya and formed a new outfit by the name The New Ford Kenya, a vehicle they used to contest their parliamentary seats in the 2007 controversial general election in Malava and Ikolomani, and they both won. In 2011, Moses Masika Wetangula was elected Ford Kenya party leader in an election that was held at the Bombers of Kenya. And for nine years, it had been a smooth ride for Bungoma Senator until Sunday 31st May 2020, when he woke up to yet another coup at Simba House. His Secretary General, a retired military major, Dr. David Simiweseli from Tongaren, and Wetangula's doorstep neighbor from Kandui, a retired police officer, Atanas Wafulwa Munyinyi, had staged a third coup in the Lion Den. That the National Council, Executive Council, having held a special meeting in accordance with Clause 24B of the party constitution, and having deliberated on the agenda for the said meeting, hereby resolves as follows. One, that the party leader, Honorable Moses Masika Wetangula, is hereby dismissed from the position of party leader on account of gross misconduct, moral impropriety, and violation of the party constitution. Uh, in bestowing upon me the position of interim party leader, and um, I want to assure colleagues and members of the party across the country that um, we're going to endeavor to work towards restoring the fight for which the ideals of this party were founded. We want to announce to our members countrywide that don't be any, in any state of panic. A lot of you have sent messages inquiring what is happening, whether there is a coup in the party, Coups are a cake, coups are an anachronistic to good order, and coups are activities of cowards. 
in their special national executive council meeting, the SLE Wamunyinyi tag team leveled five charges against Wetangula, laying them as grounds for his ouster. From today, we have dismissed the party leader of 40 Kenya, Senator Moses Masika Wetangula. Senator Moses Masika Wetangula has been the party leader for 40 Kenya for the last nine years. We wish him well. We want to tell him he did what he has to do for the nine years. But I think the NEC members have taken that decision and said we need a new party leader. And that new party leader is other than Mushmir Omenini. And we want to repeat the trio of Governor Wycliffe Wangamate of Bungoma, Honorable David Eseli Simiu of Tongaren, and Honorable Wafula Wamunyinyi of Kandui. We want to tell them that Ford Kenya is not a Bungoma affair. Ford Kenya is a national party. To return the favor, Wetangula also suspended Eseli and Wamunyinyi from their positions in the party. But when you choose the path of evil, the consequences await you. We have, as a party, suspended David Eseli Simiu. He's no longer our Secretary General. And in his place, NEC has appointed Dr. Chris Wamalwa from Kimilini as our acting Secretary General until further communication will be given. This is our home. So if they were genuine enough, how do you run away from your own house? We are the ones who are here today, and as the new Secretary General, I now have the instruments of power. To all Kenyans of goodwill, here is your party. We are going to work for the entire country, for the entire membership, and ensure that the party moves forward. I'm told he's the one who has taken the seat of treachery this morning <laughs> and purported to be the party leader of Fort Kenya. He, in this party, is the Secretary for Livestock and Agriculture, a sectoral section, like many other sectoral sections. We have fought with suspended... Are to take it over. We, you to take what are they over. During the meeting held at Radisson Blue Hotel, Aboretum Road, Kwanza Member of Parliament, Ferdinand Wanyonyi, was roughed up on claims that he was a Wetangula mall. Why are you pushing me? Oh, and after yeah, being kicked out, he headed to Simba House and joined the Wetangula camp. Caught in between this latest coup was Deputy Party Leader Richard Onyonka, who bolted out of the Eseli Wamunyinyi team, declining to be named Interim Party Leader, instead breaking the news to Wetangula at the 11th hour. I want to take this single opportunity to salute my deputy, Richard Momoima Onyonka, who was put under immense pressure by these dark forces of evil to accept to be part of the treachery to the leadership of the party. He was offered money, he was handed all over until he acquired a different telephone number and switched off the numbers that they know. And as we speak, Richard Momoima Onyonga remains the hero of this party. Both parties filed their respective changes at the Registrar of Political Parties, who in turn directed that the two factions use internal mechanisms to resolve the standoff. Wamunyinyi insists he is the bona fide party leader, having completed requirements. Ezwetangula stands his ground as well, insisting he is the boss in the den. No, 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 the story of Ford King. The attempted coups in the den. Duncan Hamber, KTN News.